one of the reasons why we decided to go ahead and have a workshop like this, because our, at our club we had a few people coming along that had, a few, had some problems with their, with their hives. And I'm just going to give you two stories, two people, uh, their story about their experiences with um, pests and diseases. First one is uh, Graeme's story. Uh, Graeme, are you here today? Yes, there's Graeme at the back. And Graeme, um, thank you for letting us uh, share your story. Uh, if anyone's got any questions um, about Graeme's experiences, then uh, is, you can discuss that with him um, during the breaks. So, uh, Graeme, uh, two years ago, set up a uh, couple of hives in his backyard in Heidelberg. And you can see he's a bit of a perfectionist as far as a tradesperson. All his the hives were very well built and maintained. He got um, a nucleus hive from one of our members, disease-free, and it went quite well for about nine months. Um, his two daughters, he's got an older daughter, and they loved helping him with the hives. The bees were so tame, you could actually shake the bees on their hands, just a bit like the bees. The, be the bees didn't mind. In fact, I believe they enjoyed it. Um, a little bit of human interaction. I mean, we like interacting with the bees, so vice versa. He's got a, a younger daughter, Susanna, who then was about six or six. And she, of course, had a little bee suit and she loved opening the, the hive with her dad. Two years ago in November, Graham said, I haven't got as many bees as I thought I did. And I said, oh, I'll come over just after Christmas and we'll have a look. And when we had a look at the... Um, the frames, you can see there was a bit of a problem. There doesn't seem to be as many um, capped uh, brood there. And we thought, maybe there's some sort of problem. Had a close-up look at the um, um, brood. And if you look carefully, you can see once again that there's caps that are nibbled. And I wasn't certain exactly what was going on here. I took the photo and sent it to Apri Inspector and one of my friends who knew more than he said, oh, I think, think you might have some serious problem. So uh, what we did is, we, um, on the advice of the apiary inspector, we got a microscope slide and took some of the goo out of the brood that was, uh, had holes in it. We opened it up and underneath was a gooey mess, which you could actually smell. It didn't smell very nice. And we uh, took a sample of that, um, put it, uh, wheeled it across the uh, microscope slide, sent it to Gribbles. Of course, come back with... Sorry, mate. You've got AFB. You're going to have to destroy your hive, um, kill all the bees, which Graham did. Uh, but he burnt the uh, frames, buried them in his backyard in a pit, and the boxes were sent away for irradiation. So he's now got his two daughters very keen on beekeeping. He's keen as mustard, and he's got a diseased backyard. So. What's he going to do? So, so what I said is, OK, we'll start it all up again at my place with brand new stock, brand new queens. And uh, after a few months, uh, so three or four months, uh, Graham was able to take some of these nukes out to his property. He, he was lucky, and this is handy. I know JP's got an, an, another property. He's, he's expanded his bees from across the road at his house to a property in the country. Um, and then... Uh, Graham's got the same thing. He's got uh, a property north of Melbourne, so he was able to transfer uh, the nukes that we made up at my place. Um, well, just use your imagination, the uh, hive is at his feet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a very nice tree. <laughs> and I always, thought, I always thought cypress trees were no good for bees, but... Um, I've learnt recently, or some time ago, from the next, thanks to Sabine, who's here, that, uh, no, they're really good for bees because they can get propolis from, um, from them. So there's the hive at the new location and well away from Heidelberg where the AFB is. And eventually we got four hives, and this is about a year later, yeah, just about a year later, um, a year ago, and um, they're thriving. And no sign, no sign of um, any diseases and a happy ending. Graham, everything going well? Yeah. yeah. So that's Graham's story. Just to prove that um, 
I hope Daniel, that you can't spot any, anything wrong with this. But that's a pretty good, pretty good, healthy. The brood is um, distributed in nearly every cell. There's a couple of empty ones that's normal. Um, uh, maybe they're called, uh, the, a heater bee goes in there to heat up the brood surrounding it. And nice, right out to the edge. So, so that's going really well. And just to add insult to injury, um, we took the bees off a frame and you can see there's a pretty good queen and hopefully disease, disease free. Uh, so that's Graham's story. Uh, next story is Kalu's story. And um, Kalu had a neighbour and uh, the, that's Kalu's house and that's his neighbour's house. And they shared this driveway where they ran their communal chooks. And um, this neighbour decided, uh, or for work, had to um, go to Singapore for indefinitely and said to Kalu, would you like to take over the managing of the hives? So Kalu um, said, oh, OK. And he said, oh, you can go to a beekeeper's meeting and they'll give you some advice, da, da, da. So Kalu did that and he turned up at one of our meetings and said, I've just got these beehives, but I've never opened them. So th I said, OK, well... I'll come around and sit down and we'll have a look. He doesn't live far from me, so it was pretty convenient. So um, we had a look, and this, this looked a bit frisky, but looked pretty healthy. So we looked inside that. Um, there's some brood in that. looked reasonably good. Are you, um, what do you think, Daniel? Jody, look okay? Yeah, okay. That's one. I was like, at least it hasn't got AFB, you know. They were a little bit wild, but that was not, not a problem. And of course, when you start off beekeeping, as I did, you don't have all the protective gear that you need. Uh, Khalil didn't have much protective gear. Uh, oh. as, <laughs> as you can see, they were pretty um, vicious. But of course, they can defend the hive well and they can collect a lot of honey, which is a... a a good um, feature of being uh, vicious. So, all looking good so far, apart from... If maybe they're very hygienic, I don't know, Jodie, but... <laughs> they're just pretty mean. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the other hive. And initially I thought there was no bees in the other hive. There was hardly any. So there's one hive, like, as you have, one's big and one, one... So I had a look at that, and what do you think about that? Doesn't look too healthy. This is, remember, the first time this uh, Kalu has looked in the hive. So I thought... And the good thing is I took a photo of it. And I was a little bit uncertain exactly whether that was a problem or, or whatever it was. I mean, you can tell, and I can tell uh, uh, straight away that uh, that is a problem. So this hive was in Northcote. Um, and there were other hives around because as I was unloading the... Um, uh, my gig from the car, peop two people walk past and say, oh, you're a beekeeper too. Mine are just up the road. And then someone said, oh, I, oh, beekeepers, my uncle's got a beekeeper, and, uh, is a beekeeper, and he doesn't live far away. So there's certainly bees in the area within flying distance. Uh, so Kalu had to do the same thing. He had to have the frames burned, but he wasn't able to burn it in his small tiny backyard, so one of the apron inspectors, Joe, kindly collected them. Oh, there's Joe at the back there. Thanks, Joe, for doing that. Um, collected them and uh, disposed of them uh, for him. He had to um, irradiate the boxes, so the boxes had to be taken to Sterodec, and which is... Um, Joe's going to explain how to do that, but it's a, a bit of a process taking to this factory in uh, over in Dandenong South and leaving them there for a couple of days and then collecting them back. But unless you do that, you've got to burn the boxes. Kalu got a little bit um, anxious and he, as soon as he found something wrong, he'd send me a photo. So he sent me this photo. So what do you reckon? Is this some sort of exotic disease? Th yes, good, thank you. This is cockroach, cockroach droppings. And um, cockroaches, I believe, are a friend of um, the hive. They will, especially during winter, will eat, uh, live there, keep it a bit warm, I'm thinking, and eat some debris. They, and 
they leave a little reminder that they've been there. So I don't think, don't think there's any great problem. Then the other day he sent me, oh, three or, three or four weeks ago, he sent me this photo here. Um, uh, this white thing, he came out of this uh, cell. And, of course, he's super sensitive to diseases after the horrible um, experiences he, he's had. So maybe um, you can keep that in your back of mind. Is this, is, has he got another problem? And hopefully um, you'll find out the answer in one of the presentations soon that that possibly is not a problem. Are there any questions? We've got about two or three minutes for questions. And then, uh, so question, yeah, yes, yes. JP, you want to... How's foul brood um, transmitted into the hive? How's it, how's it travelled? Okay. Now, the, the, so Daniel is going to explain that in his presentation. You realise that my presentation is just to raise your awareness of some of the problems that, or some of the questions that you might uh, find the answer to in the workshop. So that's a good question. Daniel will cover that uh, in his presentation. Um, Marie? Uh, if you've had AFB in one location, is it wise not to have hives back in that same location? Um, what, can you say... Is it risky the way that you would introduce it again? Well, that was a problem with, with Graham. Yeah. We, his hive was very healthy. Two years ago in November, we had extremely three or four days of above 40. All the tree plants dropped their flowers. And so his very strong hive was out looking for honey. And the best place to find it is in a weak hive, a diseased hive. And that's, where, that's how we think that um, he got his AFB in um, his, his bees raided a nearby hive that had it. So you, remember bees can go three or four, five kilometres. So that can be easily transferred, especially if the person's not looking after their hive and... Um, um, yeah. Uh, one more question. One more, last question. Thank you. Um, the bees get the disease uh, randomly, just in random location or in random location, or if uh, some specific thing happened to them. Um, the disease is spread by spores. This particular disease, and they're in the environment. So um, just realise that those spores are around, and that you've got to be wary that you're bees don't get them. Does that answer your question? Uh, so, uh, okay. If a uh, uh, find uh, the, the bigger disease in his backyard, so uh, he moved the beehive to another place. No, he didn't move them, sorry. He destroyed them completely and then we started them off from a healthy hives. He started new hives at my place. I didn't have any diseases and he started again. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. And so uh, he will never have the problem in my new Yeah. Graham, are you going to have bees in your Heidelberg backyard again. Yeah, so I think that answers the question. So thank you very much for that.